This week's episodes were brought to you by the generous support of Hyperdingo. Hey you folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to another Unity tutorial on how to make our base building game. In this episode, we are finally going to get our ghostly walls, our, our jobs for building walls to show up. Because right now, the jobs get created, but they are not displayed. And for that, we are going to need an extra controller. Now in the last episode, what we've gone and done is we did a good job of splitting up our controllers and subgroups, and we've made it a policy that controllers are sort of going to be independent from one another. But for now, especially since we're still a little bit in... Um, sort of an ethereal sort of area in terms of how jobs are going to work and be queued later on. For example, we don't actually have a model to represent a job queue. Right now, the job queue, it belongs directly to the world, which I don't think is going to be the case later on. I think we're going to have a dedicated class horde in the future. But for now, I'm a little bit more leaning towards the, let's keep it simple and just get it working, and then we'll figure out the sort of grand master plan for implementing a job queue later on. As a result, I am going to go and make a dedicated controller for um, for like the job controller, job sprites. So some sort of controller which is responsible for making sure that visuals for a job are properly represented on the screen. However, um, this is going to mostly piggyback on some other controllers in a way that um, might be like, well, maybe we should have it be part of the same controller. Because right now, our only jobs that we can build do right now are to build furniture. Right now, the only furniture is walls, but it's all going to be furniture. So right now, the job uh, controller is only going to deal with um, putting sprites of, of furniture on the screen. Therefore, we're mostly going to piggyback on some of the functionality of the furniture sprite controller. In the future, the job sprite controller is going to have to be more sophisticated, be aware of different types of jobs and things like that. And those are all questions we haven't really answered yet. So... Uh, so that's why it's going to mostly just piggyback on the furniture sprite controller. And that's why um, what we're going to do for our visuals for the pending job is we are just going to go and have a ghostly, semi-transparent version of the pending sprite there. Um, I've taken a look at some other games. Something like RimWorld, for example, what it does, it doesn't um, put a ghostly version of the sprite, and it doesn't put a generic square either. It actually has a, some dedicated artwork for a wall that's like a... Just an, a wall outline, basically. But it uses the correct wall graphics and the door and all those things. So in, in RimWorld, as far as I can tell, they have two different sets of graphics. The graphic for when it's built and a separate graphic for when it's in the job queue. And later on, we'll probably do something like that. But for now, we're just going to use a semi-transparent version of the sprite. It'll save us a lot of work. We won't have to make all the graphics for it. And especially for a system that is very likely to change later, you don't want to invest too much work ahead of time on that. So... I'm going to go ahead and create a new controller over here. C sharp. It's going to be called the job sprite controller. And again, we're going to give it its own game object here, just so that it's a little easier to find in the game and, and whatever. You know, again, this could all be on the same game object, but I'm okay with that. So game, uh, job sprite controller, and we make sure to assign it there. And let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. So what we're going to do, is we are going to be piggybacking on the uh, furniture sprite controller. We are not going to load our own sprites. We're just going to use the ones from here. We are not going to have our own code for figuring out which sprite to display. We're just going to use the furniture one because, again, right now, the job sprite controller can only handle furniture jobs. So we're just going to piggyback on that and figure it out afterwards. It probably means that this code here could probably just be inserted into furniture sprite controller. But right now, furniture sprite controller is actually in a good place. It's doing the right thing. It is completely isolated from everything else. It's doing just one job and it's doing it well. So job sprite controller is going to be the thing that breaks it. Um, this bare bones controller is mostly just going to piggyback on furniture sprite controller because we don't yet uh, fully know what our job system is going to look like in the end. So we're just going to keep it simple, right? Great. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a reference to the uh, furniture sprite controller right over here. Um, and I'm going to call it the FSC. And we're going to grab that at start. Because we're going to be referencing this quite often. So we're going to do game object dot find game object of type furniture, furniture, I can't ever spell furniture right apparently, furniture sprite controller. So we'll have a reference to it. It doesn't need an update or anything like that. All it needs to know 
its entire purpose in life is to know whenever a job gets created and whenever a job gets completed. Now, ideally, ideally, we want this to work very similar to our other systems where we're going to have some sort of job queue um, class that we can register to, right? Job queue. Actually, it might be time to do that. Then something like register um, job creation callback. All right, and we want some sort of function, something like this that says on job created, and it's gonna take in a job. Fix me. We only we can only do furniture furniture building jobs. Can't write today. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna have another callback that is on job completed or on job ended, right? This executes whether a job was completed or canceled. I mean, we're just gonna be removing the sprite from the game and that is it. Now, of course, we're getting an error here because this thing, this thing doesn't exist, but in theory, we're gonna do that. And then the job has a register job complete and cancel. So we're just going to register on job ended. So we're going to use the same function for both. Whether a job was completed or was canceled. We actually don't care here because our only job is to clean up our sprites. So um, obviously we have, to, we have to create the sprite and we have to delete the sprite here. So we still, we still got some work done to do. But the big question is this line. We don't have a job queue. So when a job gets created, we know this, we can check our build mode con controller over here. And we are just directly in queuing the job to the world controller. So again, we have a little bit of lack of, um, of compartmentalization. Our world controller, um, actually, sorry, it's not our world controller, it's our world. Our world just has a generic job queue on it and it enqueues that. So the right now, the only way that we could possibly inform the job sprite controller that a new job has been created is if we put in a fault call over here, right? If we do something over here to trigger job sprite controller, which is what we're going to do. Instead of doing this, fix me. No such thing as a job queue yet. And maybe, maybe, hell, maybe I should do it this episode. I don't know. Because what I was going to say, what we could do when we build things, we could do something like game object dot find object of type um, job sprite controller. And we can manually, if it's a public, if this were a public, we could manually call this. You know what? I think it's time to bite the bullet and make the job queue. We don't know what it's going to look like yet, but let's go ahead and, and, and do that. I guess I can add a file here. I've never done that. I always add it through Unity. Probably be fine, but let's go and create a new model over here. Let's create something called job queue. We don't know exactly what it's going to do or look like in the end. But it looks like we need something for this. And our job queue is just going to take some responsibility away from our world mod model, which is to say right now, generic, right now, the world model has this queue job, right? So we're going to take this, we're going to move it over to here and we're going to make it protected. So no one outside can mess with it. Uh, this is not a modern behavior. It's a generic kind of thingamabob. And instead in world, instead of doing this, we are going to be changing this to, let's keep it public for now. It's may it's probably okay, actually. So now it's going to have a job queue instance. So we're going to create it here. It's not a generic, so it doesn't need to know this. But instead, in our job queue, in our constructor, so we're going to have a public constructor for job queue. Come on. There we are. <laughs> Be bad at Scrabble today. Job queue equals new job queue like that. And then we do have to add a couple of functions because what are you complaining about? Oh, it's not supposed to return a void. There we go. Look, now you're a controller. Excellent. Okay. So now we've got some errors, of course, because our 
our world has a reference to something called job queue, but it's not the generic queue anymore. But it doesn't mean we can't have the exact same interface. I think that's probably OK. So people are expecting right now that there is a public function called in queue that takes a job. I see no reason why we couldn't do that. And it, this happens, this is mostly acting as a wrapper to this generic class right now, which may or may not always be the case. I don't know. For all I know, we're perfectly happy. So we're going to have this to do call callbacks. What happens if we do this now? OK, we're expected to know the count over here. We actually might not care about that. This is just for our debug log. Um, let's go ahead and, and get rid of that that check. We may or may not need to supply a count. OK, so things are now once again working because our building thing, rather than directly writing to a job, uh, a queue generic, we are actually saying, hey, listen, the world, you have a job queue, which is our, our class now over here, and we're going to queue this new job. So everything's working exactly the same as before, which is to say nothing's happening. But everything will start to change if in our job queue, we do have the ability to have a callback. So we need using system. So hey, something might want to know whenever a job was created or, you know, in queued or something like that. But we're going to have this callback. So if our callback is not null, then run this. And then, of course, we want to have public void register. Actually, I already wrote it once, didn't I? Save myself a little bit of typing. Register job creation callback. Boom, right over here, which is going to require an action that takes a parameter of job and is a callback. And we're just going to go ahead and plus equals the callback. And even though we're not planning on using it right now, we'll go ahead and provide an unregister function just in case. So that just removes the callback over there. OK, so right now we queue up the job. And then if there's any callbacks, we call them. And of course, we do want callbacks. Our job created sprite over here, we want the job queue to let us know whenever job gets created. Boom, done. And then when a job gets created, on job created gets called, we're going to create a, a sprite over here, right? To do sprite. Then after that, we're going to tell the job, hey, let us know. We're not talking to the job queue. We're asking the job to let us know, hey, when uh, your job gets ended or completed or canceled in some way, let us know. And then here, to do delete sprites, sprite singular. OK, let's create a sprite. Because this, if I try to compile with an F8, oop, no, uh, no object reference required. Oh, oh, of course. Um, silly me. We are, we are just calling, this would be a static call over here. Can I, how do we, can I hide this and be like, no, no, I'm fine. Um, we're calling a static over here, which you wouldn't want to do. Instead, we want to say world controller dot instance dot world dot job queue. This is the instance of the job queue. Now this should work fine. Build, build, build. We do have an error. Oh, yes, it needs an argument. It needs to be told what the job is. Wonderful. OK, everything is compiling now, and everything should run fine. But again, we don't have any visuals. So now, finally, the job sprite controller is going to be responsible for putting up a sprite. And this is where our piggybacking on the furniture sprite controller is going to come in handy, because we are going to use the, this controller's own sprite list and the get sprite for furniture function. In fact, I'm just going to make this public, which is harmless. I think in the end, people won't actually need to call this. I don't think there's any reason anything will need to call this later on. But there's no harm. This is just a function that if you pass it a furniture object, will simply return a, the correct sprite for that furniture object. So over here, we're getting there. Over here, we can call, so sprite, the sprite is equal to the furniture, furniture sprite controller dot um, get sprite for furniture, we need to pass it a furniture object. How do we get that? That's a little bit more tricksy because we don't actually have that right now. Um, the job itself, 
Like all we have a reference to in this function, right? In this on job created, the only thing we have a reference to is the job itself. And the job doesn't really know um, anything about what it, um, about what it, what the job is for. The only reason this job knows that it's supposed to build a wall is that when it's because it's got a callback here, this callback for on job complete actually builds the wall. But other than that, it's actually completely ignorant about what it is. So there's a couple of options here. We could, I mean, we could have an extra parameter here that stores something like the name of the object we're trying to build or a reference to the, um, to a reference to the object or, or something of that nature. I like the idea of this being a pure class where it doesn't know anything about the visuals, of course. I mean, clearly I'm, I'm way into that sort of thing. Um, we may need something. I mean, furniture, for example, right? Our actual furniture objects do know that they have an object type, right? Which is also, which is what we use for visuals. Although that's hardly the only thing we use it for. Um, when we create a job, like we could have a placeholder. I don't want to have a link to furniture, right? I don't want to have something like furniture, the furniture, even though right now our jobs only deal with furniture, but later on it won't. So, and I don't want to link to a bunch of diverse stuff. I think it might be okay for there to be a string for something like job type or um, what do I call it, object type. And that might be okay because it's generic enough. Someone else might use this for something. If someone else is going to be aware of what this is for. That might be okay. We could also use a generic object. Um, job data object or something like this. Can you not do this? Can I not just have a generic? Oh, yes, right. Unity engine dot object and just object object. Or like system. Are you happy with that? Yeah, okay. So what this would be would be a generic. Shit, where is it? Job. Generic. This points to any object. And we could store data in there, and then what we could do is we could cast it later on to something else, assuming we know. I, I don't really like this. I think for now, we're going to just settle on a temporary solution. Fix me. We are going to go, and actually, I'll make it public. I'm going to make this terrible in all, all sorts of ways. The furniture. Hard coding. I mean, it's not really hard coding exactly. Um, a parameter for furniture. Do not like. We'll figure out something for this, okay? But we've got this for now. Most likely we'll use a generic object type, but we'll revisit that later on. So when we create a job, we can stuff in a reference to what the piece of furniture we're building. So in our build mode controller, when we create the job over here, all right, creating a new job, Right now, we're just creating a job with a callback. We're going to go ahead and job.thefurniture is going to have a reference to the um, furniture type is a string, right? OK, fine. You know what? Job object type. We'll go ahead and do this. Maybe it's going to be fine. Uh, maybe we do we make it public? get protected set, and we will require that. We're gonna require that you pass us a string that has some sort of job object type information in it because something might have to refer to that. I'm not sure that we're gonna keep this forever, but for now it's going to be fine. Um, we don't need a semicolon there. That's what's causing that error. And now if we try to compile, we'll get an error because this needs a string, which we're gonna pass there and we don't have to set it here. And compile. Okay. So this is still looking for something here. Get sprite for furniture. Get sprite for furniture requires a furniture object. We don't have a furniture object. We do have a string that describes the a job object type. We can convert this into an object furniture because Because our world has 
a dictionary that goes from a dictionary to a furniture. Yeah, see, like, I, I realize, I, I feel like I'm doing a terrible job. I, I, it's the sort of thing, if you can't explain it in a sentence, or you can't show it in a sentence, it's like you clearly don't understand it properly, which is what I'm running into here. But we'll get it done. So I'm going to make a public function. Can't type today either. That returns furniture. Um, get furniture prototype and takes in a string, uh, which is the object type. And it just returns um, furniture prototypes for the object type. And I should probably actually check uh, because this might this could easily throw an error. Um, if furniture prototypes dot contains key object type equals false debug dot log error no furniture with type object type and we just return a null. Okay, so now if we go back to job sprite controller, we can call our world controller dot instance dot world dot get furniture prototype and we pass it a string that we get from the job. So the job gives us a string, we feed the string into this, this returns a furniture prototype that we feed into that. Oh wait, no, hold on, I'm wrong here. It needs a location. Ah shit. The whole thing about this is it needs to know what its neighbors are. This It's not a furniture prototype that it wants. It's not a furniture prototype that it wants at all. This wants an actual piece of installed furniture so it knows where it is and what its neighbors are. You know, I'm doing all this. So there's two possibilities here. Um, one possibility is that the furniture sprite controller will render the right kind of graphic based on jobs, not just on top, not just in terms of what furniture was installed, but it could check to say, okay, you don't have a wall in this tile, but you have a job to build a wall in this tile. If so, let's return the graphic for that. And that may be what we want to do. Alternatively, we can have the job sprite controller be a lot more sophisticated here um, and have it be responsible for that. So um, the tiles that are already in place won't necessarily update themselves based on jobs, but this will. I think what might be the simplest thing to do right now is this get sprite for furniture, we're going to have another variant of it, which is simply going to ask for a string. And it's just going to return this version of it. Well, actually, it doesn't check anything. It just literally returns the base object type. Um, which won't quite work for the walls because wall, just a sprite for wall doesn't exist. There's a wall underscore instead. So what we'll do is we'll do a bit of a check here. So we're going to try the base key itself. We're going to try the base key itself. Assuming this doesn't return false, then we're just going to return this. Actually, I'll, I'll switch it around the other way then. So we're going to try, you pass me an object type. Do we have a key for that object type? Great, return it. Um, otherwise, well, we don't need an else because the return will just end it. So otherwise, we're going to try object type with a single underscore because wall underscore is valid. In which case, if that exists, then we'll return that. Otherwise, we'll simply return null after throwing up this error here, like that. So now over here, I'm going to call get sprite for furniture, and instead of all this extra stuff here with the prototype, we're just going to be passing it a string. This string, we know, is the name of the furniture, so we're going to pass that, we're going to get some sort of sprite there, and we're going to create a game object at the right place, which we can basically already have an idea about how that's supposed to go.
We'll probably want to keep these pairs and everything. Yeah, so we're more or less going to copy this function here. So we're going to create a, I'm going to call this job game object. We don't have a sprite map yet, but we're going to do that soon. We don't need furniture. We don't need a name. Well, the name is going to be the job object type. Job underscore plus that. Uh, and we don't actually have coordinates for this job. Ah, oh, shoot, we need to know all this information. The job... Oh, no, we do know it, because the job has a tile. We know for sure the job has a tile. Actually, let me back up over here. So, this is J, J, J... Hold on, let me rename this. Job. There we go, that'll be better. So, we know the coordinates, we know this, we know that. We're going to get back to you in a second here. Um, and we actually already have the sprite. I guess I don't have to save the sprite. I can simply call this. Get rid of that. So we're going to create a game object for the job. I'm going to set its name, set its position, um, set its parent to us. We're going to set the sprite renders to sprite. The only thing we need to do is keep a reference to it. So we need a dot generic. We need a dictionary that maps from a job to a game object. Job game object map. We'll need to instantiate it here in the start, or initialize it. Well, actually instantiate is correct. And we're just going to set things here. Register things, set the callbacks, so it will now be rendered. The one thing I want to do is our sprite here. Actually, let me break this up. Still can't type today. We're going to keep a reference to the sprite render, and we're going to say sr.sprite. We can set the sprite. So we add the sprite renderer. We're going to grab a copy of it. We're going to set the sprite, same as before. But then we're also going to set the color. And we're going to set the color to new color. We're not going to change its tint, so three floats. But we're going to send it a third parameter, which is the alpha. And we're going to give it like a 50% transparency. And we're going to try that to start off with. So this is going to be a transparent sprite at this point. And then down here with the uh, job ended, we're going to get our job. Uh, actually, no. Get our game object. Job go, which is going to be set from game object map for job, which should be in here. There's nothing else that should delete this, so that should never. It should never go wrong. Yeah, we'll see. Um, we're going to make sure to unregister our callbacks. That is where it could be wrong. Job dot, hello. Job dot, oh, it's because I call it J. Let me rename this to job. And that to job. Job dot, unregister. Okay, so I don't have unregister functions over here. So we need these two. Unregister. Unregister. Well, actually, the job's just going to go away at that point. Do we even need to unregister it? Because the job will disappear. But for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and clean it up. Right? Because when the job is ended, this job object itself should be forgotten forever. But we'll, we'll be careful, and we will unregister our callbacks. So we're going to unregister both. So that's for job complete and cancel. And then we're going to destroy our game object destroy the job game object. So I think despite all the goofing around here, I think we're in a state where we can basically work. So floor is still floor. Wall. There we go. It is it is transparent. We could give it a color tint as well. Um, which might be fine. I think maybe it wants to be more transparent than that. I'm not sure. So let's give it a color tint, just for the sake of argument. Let's make it, um, let's make it green. R, G, so let's make it more green. 0 0.5, 
0 0.5, but also more transparent. We'll figure out a better way to represent this later on. Might be nice to desaturate it. Actually, we'll probably just want uh, custom graphics, but there we go. Green and semi-transparent. So now we've, we know these job objects are there. Nothing's finishing them yet. But that will actually be surprisingly easy to make a little AI character that just ignores pathfinding, just walks over to a job and poof, completes it, therefore building a wall over here. I'm still not 100% keen on a lot of what we have going on here. The whole job system uh, definitely does need another look at later on. Um, well, the job itself, I think this job class is perfectly fine. I think our furniture sprite controller class is perfectly fine. I think the way we're drawing things in the job create, there's a lot of things that aren't perfectly fine because um, I'm, I'm not keen. Like we are just piggybacking on the furniture and it does mean that the walls we put down, it is not, it is not properly right now representing the look of it. But there's a couple of different ways that we can resolve this. And for now, I'm not going to worry about it. For now, I'm going to leave this as is because I don't want to put too much work into the job queue system because I know that it's the sort of thing that is likely going to change in the future. So next episode, we're going to make our little person that walks around and actually builds the walls for us. And look at that. AI, it's going to be that quick. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you very much to all the December supporters over at patreon.com slash quill18creates. And these mic check supporters, we've got Alexander Gutler, we've got Marius Feldvold again, Disco Geek, Ole Peter Talgo, Julian Auger Lafon, Steven Stagger, Michael McClintock, we've got Kale the Quick, Drazion, Wes Oldenboiving, Craig Mortel, Nail Vickstrom, Philip Nichols, Andre Odendahl, Niall, Neil Blakely Milner, Speedy Savant, Valiant Keek Cakefiend, Aaron Toivson, Radel Del Paso, Peso, <laughs> Bunny, Hyper Dingo, and Andrew Henninger. And thank you everyone who watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed these, to these videos. Really appreciate all your continued support and look forward to continue this awesome project of ours. See you next time.